So in the last video, I talked about this module here, the voltage control low frequency oscillator by music from outer space. But I didn't tell you about this auxiliary circuit board here. This is an add-on to the music from outer space circuit board. You can see it's kind of bodged onto the bottom there. What's this for? Well, let me answer that question with a question. Okay, let's suppose you wanted to control the pitch of an oscillator using the low frequency oscillator. So, you, you know, you take your square wave out from here and you put it into your oscillator and it sounds kind of like this. <laughs> Okay, fine. But now, what happens if you control this with a keyboard and you play a note? So you heard what happened. It started on the high note and then went to the low note, high note, low note, and so forth. This time is a little different. It started on the high note, but it almost immediately went to the low note. Let's try this again. There was a little longer on the high note. There it started on the low note. High note short. Low note short. In other words, the oscillator is just doing its thing and whatever state it randomly happens to be in when you press the key is what you get at the start of the note. And so each note sounds different because it starts with a high note or it starts with a low note and it stays at the high note for a long time or it stays for a short time or it's kind of random and maybe you know maybe random is what you want but maybe it's not what if you wanted it to always sound the same you want it to always start say on the high note and stay for the full duration and then drop down to the low note and then the high note and then the low note how would you do that So how do we solve this conundrum? Well, what you want to do is find some way to send in a signal that says to the low frequency oscillator, hey, I don't care what you're doing right at this moment. Drop whatever you're doing. Start a new waveform right now. Easier said than done. But here is a circuit that tries to do that. This is a design by a guy named Tim Parkhurst, Magic Spoke Electronics, and it's a modification for a low-frequency oscillator to give it a sync input. Uh, this wasn't designed for the music from outer space oscillator, but if you zoom in on the fine print, it says, this circuitry should work on most triangle core LFOs and VCOs. What's a triangle core? Well, uh, the oscillator down inside at the very center of it, it's creating a triangle wave. And then for all the other waveforms that you want to have on the front panel, it uses that triangle wave to derive these other waveforms. But the triangle wave is what it starts off with. That's what it means by a triangle core. And in this oscillator, there is a capacitor and there's a voltage across that capacitor, and for, for reasons we don't have to go into too deeply, um, when the voltage on that capacitor is plus 5 volts, the triangle waveform is at minus 5 volts, and when the voltage on the capacitor is minus 5 volts, the triangle waveform is at plus 5 volts, or whatever the minimum and maximum is. But the point is that when the capacitor is fully charged up to either plus or minus 5 volts, the triangle wave is at its minimum or maximum, 5 volts. So the idea is that when you have a pulse coming in on this sync input, what you want to do is right away, as fast as possible, charge this capacitor to either 5 volts or minus 5 volts, which will force the oscillator to be at the bottom end or the top end of its triangle wave. 
So that's what this circuit is supposed to do. And if you look in there, you see C1, it says 0 0.001 microfarads, or in other words, one nanofarad. Uh, that's the capacitor in the, in the oscillator. And then the stuff outside the red box is the modification that's quickly charging that capacitor to plus five volts or minus five volts. Now, as I said, this wasn't designed for the music from outer space oscillator, and that oscillator has a larger uh, integrating capacitor. I think it's 20 nanofarads, if I remember right. Could be 10, I think it's 20. So the thing is that it takes 20 times longer to charge up a 20 nanofarad capacitor as a one nanofarad capacitor if you're charging it through the same resistance. So in order to charge the capacitor up fast enough, since it's 20 times larger, you need something like maybe 10 or so, 10 or 20 times smaller resistors. So R36, R37 um, need to be made smaller in order to compensate for the larger capacitor. You also have to make sure you have the right ratio between R36 and R37 in order to get it to come to the voltage it's supposed to come to and not too high or too low. In fact, in my version, I made one of these resistors a, a trimmer res potentiometer so you could uh, tune it in to the right voltage. The other thing is that there's a JFET transistor in there and Parkhurst used a 2N3819. I didn't have any of those, uh, so I tried the JFETs that I did have. I tried a J111, didn't work. I tried several J112s, they didn't work. I tried several J113s, they did work. And I also tried a, a, a 2N3819, or several of them in fact, and those also worked. But the, the J113 is the one that I actually used. And other than that, other than the resistor changes and the JFET substitution, it's pretty much uh, as shown here. So I made up a printed circuit board for this, and I also put on the circuit board a footprint for a Eurorack Cosmo power header. The reason being that the Music from Outer Space board wasn't designed for Eurorack, doesn't have a Eurorack power header. Uh, the other Music from Outer Space modules I've made, I had a little circuit board that provided a footprint for that power header. In this case, I figured might as well put it on the same circuit board with the modification. So there it is. Assembled it, put it together, turned it on, and it worked. Let's take a look. Okay, how does this work? Well, let's take the keyboard gate, plug it into the sync input. We've got our pulse output, 50%. Press key. And it starts at the beginning of the upper note. And it does that every time. If I flip the switch, it starts with a lower note. Nice, consistent behavior. Problem solved. Let's look at the other waveforms. Here we've got the triangle wave switch in the upper position. And the triangle wave starts at the top. If we put the switch in the lower position, triangle wave starts at the bottom. Here's a sine wave, switch in the upper position, sine wave starts at the top, switch in the lower position, sine wave starts at the bottom. Now here's the sawtooth wave with the switch in the upper position, and it starts at the top, but what's going to happen when we flip the switch? It's going to start at the bottom. Well, the bottom really is the top. They happen at just about the same time. Well, what really happens? 
Okay, so here you learn that what this switch does is it doesn't switch between the top and bottom voltage. It switches between the start of the waveform and halfway through the waveform. With the switch down, what we're doing is we're starting halfway down the uh, sawtooth, which is maybe not the most useful thing. But with the switch in the top position, it's fine. Here's the ramp wave, switch up. It starts at the beginning of the waveform, switch down. It starts in the middle of the waveform. Again, for the ramp wave, the bottom switch position is probably not that useful. But the top position is fine. Now having learned that, it's probably worth looking again at the pulse wave. We've got it in the middle here. With the switch up, it starts on the top. With the switch down, it starts on the bottom. But what if you have a very narrow pulse? With the switch up, it starts at the beginning of the narrow pulse. With the switch down, it's not going to start at the falling edge here. It's going to start halfway between these two rising edges. So it'll start on the bottom, but it won't start at the beginning of the bottom. It'll start at the middle of the bottom. which, once again, is probably not the most useful behavior. I don't know. You might find a use for it, but it's, I think, less useful than the switch up position. And if you have a very long pulse with the switch up, it starts at the beginning of the long pulse. But with the switch down, it's just going to start in the middle of the long pulse. It's still going to start high, it's just not going to stay high for as long. So what do you do if you want to have a long pulse and you want to start at the beginning of the short low pulse? Well, probably to do that, what you'd have to do is set the pulse width to something narrow, put yourself in the top switch position and get this kind of waveform and then use an external module to invert that waveform for you. So yeah, this module is not going to solve all of your problems for you all by itself, but it does pretty well. Okay, so there you go. It worked. Hope you enjoyed that and take a look down below for link to the GitHub repository where you'll find schematics and build notes and uh, circuit board layouts and so forth if you want to try making one of these modified music from outer space low frequency oscillators for yourself give it a go meantime uh, check back in soon i'm going to have some more videos for some other modules that i've built recently coming up in the near future hope to see you then like, subscribe, and all that, and see you next time on Analog Output.